Hey everybody, Tuesday lesson video time and for today's lesson I decided to go back to talking about the book Syncopation by Ted Reed and applying what I call syncopation modules. So this is part two of that series if you will which in my opinion is never ending because there's always something to do with syncopation. Uh, but the concept here for today's video is that we're taking page 37 slash 38 depending on which version of the book you have and we're essentially trying to break down uh, a linear phrase which uh, is sort of in the style of drummers like Vinnie Coluta. So anybody who knows me, I'm a Vinnie Coluta freak, I'm a, I'm a big fan. So this is actually one of the concepts that really actually op opened me up to his playing. Paul DeLong, a uh, very famous drummer from the Toronto area, is um, someone I studied with in my second year at Humber, Humber College in Toronto, and I won't mention the year but he had broken this phrase down for me and it really stuck and it really opened up my playing in terms of um, just understanding uh, linear patterns, but also within a fusion context. And it really kind of took me down the path of wanting to know more about, okay, what else is there out there of Vinny and what different things does he do? And oh man, like, can you show me recordings, show me video? Um, this is also back in the age of no YouTube, no online sort of stuff. You had to find out a lot of this from different people. So Paul was that um, that sort of catalyst for me, that jumping off point of just being exposed to this type of material and stuff that Vinny would do. But I'm almost positive he got this from a, another drummer named Casey Shrell, who actually wrote a book on these types of concepts. Um, but I have to thank Paul for being the one that really was the spearhead for me in terms of being exposed to this, so thanks Paul. So the concept here is that we're uh, playing the figures on the page with the right hand. Um, if you're a lefty, you do it in the left hand. And in fact, I would even say another option you can do even as a righty is to try it in the left hand. I've done that before, um, but a lot of these phrases for me on the kit really sit with that right hand. Uh, now, just for a note for anybody who has the PDF version that I've made for this video, I've written all of the figures starting or basically outlining the patterns on page 37 with the right hand being on the hi-hat. In the video though, I do it on the floor tom and that's just from a visual standpoint so you can sort of see a little bit more of the kit and what I'm doing so I'm not so closed here. Uh, basically opening up this way so you can kind of see everything happening. Um, and for the sake of breaking these parts down, I'll be doing it on the floor tom with the right hand. So. Jumping into the figures here, we've got patterns of, or phrases of groups of two, groups of four, groups of six, those are the more uh, common patterns you'll see. Occasional groups of eight, and then one group of 10 at the very end, which I'll break that down a little bit and show you some other options from there. So uh, the very first one is on an eighth note that we're, we're breaking down. Eighth note would just be, you know, right hand on uh, floor tom or whatever surface and um, filling in the gap with the left hand. So if I had an entire bar of eighth notes, basically just going one and two and three and four and, it would just sound like that, but filling in the gap with the right hand would turn into one, two, three and four and. So we're just filling in the gaps with ghosted left hand notes on the snare drum. Pretty straight ahead. Second one is on a quarter note value and all we're doing is just expanding the phrase or just filling in more of the gap. So uh, think like Jurassic Park and they were filling in all the dinosaur DNA with uh, amphibian DNA. I'm a nerd. So, <laughs> so what this turns into now is right, left, left kick. So we're adding an additional left kick onto the pattern. And this just to maybe go down a little bit of a rabbit hole here. This is actually a, a chafeeism in, in my opinion because with a lot of the chafey patterns and you can watch any of my old videos regarding this material, um, uh, essentially the chafey patterns are taking compound stickings for the most part and if you don't know what a compound sticking is, it's essentially a pattern where we're, we're incorporating some sort of element of a double stroke within there. Um, so groups of fours would just be single pair diddles, right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left, right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left. Well, when we sub in a kick drum part in there, usually it'll go at the end of the phrase, and that means everything kind of either has to shift over or be modified to make that part fit. 
So what I'm doing in this case is going right, left, left, kick. So on a quarter note phrase, four sixteenth notes within that quarter note, uh, and if I had an entire bar of them, it would just sound like this. Okay. Quarter note phrase, pretty straight ahead. The third one we've got is going to happen either on a dotted quarter note, a quarter note with an eighth rest, eighth note with a quarter rest, quarter note tied to an eighth note, and so on. But bottom line, it's going to be based on a six sixteenth note figure. So anything that has six sixteenth notes in it, um, going over the, the bar, uh, will have a phrase of right, left, left, kick, kick, left. So again, we're just taking the group of four that we had before and subbing in or uh, putting in addition to the end of it, a kick and a left. Now I, I kind of put a name to this. I call this a Steve Gadd six stroke. Uh, Vinny six stroke, doesn't really matter. I, I call it Steve Gadd six stroke because that's really the first drummer I've sort of seen do this phrase. Um, and uh, within the phrase that we're doing here, it would just sound like this. Let's just say I had four, uh, four dotted quarter notes going through the bar or going through a figure. It would just sound like this with that pattern. So right, left, left, kick, kick, left. Now, that's the, the phrase that is common for this whole uh, section that we're doing because again the accented part in the right hand is outlining the patterns that we have uh, that are written on the page of syncopation however it doesn't mean you can't modify this so one uh, one thing if again I've done a whole video on this from way way back a few months ago um, regarding six note figures and I talk about the Steve Gatt six stroke in there and that phrase of the Steve Gatt six stroke prominently has a left hand accent at the very end so or what I like to call an anticipating accent because it anticipates leading back into your downbeat. So you can actually take the phrase if you wanted and add that accent and it gives it a little bit more of a flair to the pattern. It also gives you more options so you're not always married to just doing the one phrase. So you could play it all with that, that anticipating accent at the end. You can start swapping phrases out. You can one phrase with the unaccented end, one with the accented end. And this will give you, um, you know, again, some options in your sound. So if I were actually playing a, a phrase or one of the patterns that are, are in that page with this figure, uh, leading back into my right hand on the downbeat. So let's say it was bar two, and bar two in page 37 is a quarter note. Uh, sorry, two quarter notes, eighth rest, quarter note, eighth note. Um, so normally, just phrase with all the ghosted left hand notes, it would sound like this. But I could take that phrase and easily, where the sixth stroke happens in the middle, I could accent that end. So by doing so, you know, it, you're not always feeling like you're just regurgitating the same phrase. Again, gives you options for different ways that you can play these patterns and so on. So I, I urge you to try both ways. Then we, the, those are the, the three common phrases, eighth note, quarter note, and dotted quarter note values. Then we occasionally have eight sixteenth note phrases that are in there. And this is where it kind of gets a little bit icky for some drummers when they're breaking this down. Um, Cause now it becomes a lot of linear motion between the right foot and the left hand. And you can sort of come up with your own possibilities and options from there. So I'll talk a little bit about a few of those, those ones going forward. So the original way that I learned this eight note phrase pattern is, again, taking our group of six, right, left, left, kick, kick, left, and we're adding an additional kick left at the end. So again, this is over a quarter note, or sorry, a, a half note phrase, or two quarter notes tied, dotted quarter note, eighth rest, any of those types of patterns that you see going forward, as long as it's got eight sixteenth notes in it, it would sound like this. So right, left, left, kick, kick, left, kick, left. Now it seems like a bit of an odd phrase, 
And uh, again, I got this from Paul when I studied with him and I'm more, more than sure that he probably got it from Casey Shirell and his book and his concepts. Uh, maybe even personally, I don't know. Um, and I started running through some different options of the phrases and more, the more I went through some different options, the more I realized that that one actually kind of makes sense because you're coming out of the pattern with a left hand as opposed to coming out with a kick where, you know, normally in our group of four, that's the only one that we're sort of coming out with a individual kick pattern. Um, so there's a certain comfort level, I think, to doing it that way. And again, you could also, you know, manage to play an accent at the end if you wanted to. I think I might in some ways overcomplicate it a little bit if you're just getting into this whole concept of new in your phrasing. But uh, ultimately, that's the, that's the way that I had sort of learned it from Paul. Now, I, I put in the PDF two different variations of this. I put in uh, one where you're essentially just riding out the inverted doubles all the way through the phrase. So now it becomes right, left, left, kick, kick, left, left, kick. So that one would sound like this. put in is where you're uh, really focusing on playing doubles in your kick more. So right, left, left, kick, kick, left, kick, kick. So you could try to sub those phrases in. Um, some of you might feel more comfortable doing it the original way I do it in the video, in the performance portion of it. Some of you might actually find these to be um, more in your wheelhouse, but ultimately it's about options. It's just about kind of creating a dialogue for yourself to understand what phrases you gravitate towards to, what phrases you're not as comfortable with and maybe that you want to improve upon, and uh, which ones you maybe want to implicate a little bit more so. So it, again, it gives you options. To me, it's all about options. It's all about developing your vocabulary on the drum set. So that's sort of why I've made these two different parts on top of it. Then it gets into the very last phrase. So the very end of the entire, uh, the very end of the entire piece is just an uh, eighth note quarter, eighth quarter eighth phrase, and then it's just a half rest for the entire last part. So coming out of that last eighth note, you're then creating this group of ten, which is right, left, left, kick, kick, left, kick, left, left, kick. And again, it, it seems like it's a uh, very complex or complicated sort of pattern, but to me, and again, that, that's the way that I sort of learned it from Paul, and he had that written down in the, in the, the book, uh, or in his lesson sheet that he did with me, and it kind of it stuck. Um, so again, that, that pattern being, if I had to just break it down again, it's a really And it's a group of 10 16th notes, so you can think of it as um, essentially two groups of five, which you know now means that you have some different options to break that down. So I'll go through the ones that I put in the PDF. Uh, one of them, again, still riding out the inverted doubles all the way through. So right, left, left, kick, kick, left, left, kick, kick, left. And again, you're now coming out of it with a left hand at the end. <laughs> The second one now being right, left, left, kick, kick, left, kick, left, kick, left. So you're just basically riding out singles uh, all the way from your left hand to the end, starting on the, the, the sixth, sixteenth note. So that turns into... And that one might be good if any, any of you wanted to again develop that relationship between the left hand and the kick. So that type of material is going to maybe be helpful. The third one is almost like we're breaking it down into two five stroke rolls. And so anybody who doesn't know a five stroke roll or the phrasing for a five note pattern, right, left, left, right, right, left, right, right, left, left. So orchestrating that with your right foot on the kick, you're now gonna be doing right, left, left, kick, kick. That's the first five, and the last five is left, kick, kick, left, left. So right foot's playing that kick, it's subbing in for what would be the right hand on that group of five. So that turns into... Which is also a neat 
variation. And then the fourth one I wrote down is uh, kind of a, a subdued group of five, which you're kind of already doing a little bit of in the original pattern I do at the very end. But this one turns into right, left, left, kick, kick, left, kick, kick, left, kick. So it's like three, two at the end. So it's a five stroke and then a three, two, uh, left, kick, kick, left, kick. So that one you're going to have. And there you have it. I mean, those are the different ways that you can kind of implement or keep yourself on your toes um, when playing this. Uh, just, you know, again, trying different options, staying kind of on the ball and not always thinking about just playing one stagnant phrase all the way through. Another side of this too is, I know I, in the video I play it all on my, my floor tom, but that doesn't mean that you can't move that around the kit as much as you want as well. Like. So you can have fun with it, start orchestrating and moving it around. That's one of the other sides to doing a lot of this material is exploring the drum set. Um, and for anybody out there who's doing this material and doesn't have a drum set or during these times doesn't have access to being able to, being able to play their drum set, I look at a lot of drumming uh, or learning how to drum similar to learning how to draw uh, or create art. Sometimes, you know, just being able to sit with a piece of paper and a pencil and learn how to sketch is almost more important in the beginning than it is to have all the paints or pencil crayons or you know, whatever implements of color you have. So practicing this material, you don't need to be sitting at a drum set. If you've got a pad, uh, you know, your, your lap, even if you don't have sticks, you could play all this stuff without that. So you can essentially implement the patterns any way you want. Uh, that's like just sketching in black and white, just your, your piece of paper and pencil. Um, when you add parts of the drum set to it, it's just like adding colors. So now I have more options of what I want to do. So, and this video is for you with how you want to create this stuff in your kit. So, um, like I mentioned, there's a PDF that goes along with this video. Uh, if you like the video, please, please like it. If you like my lessons, please subscribe. And um, hopefully everybody is doing well during these crazy times. So keep practicing, stay safe, and uh, we'll see you soon.